Irina Sendler was born in Warsaw, Poland on February 15, 1910. Her father taught her many things, but one lesson in particular stayed with her for the rest of her life. Always help the needy. When Irina was only seven years old, her father died of typhus. But the years she spent with him would come to have an enormous influence on her life. When she grew up, Irina followed in the footsteps of her father, who was a doctor, and she became a nurse. And later, she became employed as a social worker in the Warsaw Social Welfare Department, where she helped distribute food, clothes to the family in need. At the time, Jews living in many parts of Europe were being persecuted. But even though Irina was a devout Catholic, she refused to give in to prejudice. She helped several Jewish families just like she helped everyone else. During the Second World War, the Nazis created the Warsaw Ghetto to intern the Jewish families. And it was the largest Jewish ghetto established by the Nazis. At its peak, it held around 400,000 Jews. Life in the ghetto was characterized by overcrowding, hunger, instability, and disease. Irina, who was concerned with the appalling living conditions, decided to get involved. She joined Zagoda, an underground resistance organization in German-occupied Poland that worked to save Jews. Irina realized she needed to do something, even if it meant risking her own life. Together with her colleagues, Irina started secretly helping Jewish children escape the ghetto. Irina visited many Jewish homes and families, but many mothers refused to surrender their children to a stranger, even if that stranger was well-intentioned and had a plan to bring their children to freedom. But staying meant certain death, either by being murdered inside its walls or deportation to concentration camps. Since Nazi surveillance of the ghetto was extensive, Irina was forced to find creative ways to hide the children and smuggle them out. One method was to pretend that the children were seriously ill and bring them to hospitals just outside the ghetto. But as surveillance increased, Irina had to hide the children in suitcases, garbage bags, and in some cases, coffins. One rescue involved a baby named Elusina. Irina hid her in a wooden box that was supposed to contain bricks. The girl, just five months old, was brought to safety and the only thing she had with her was a small silver spoon that her mother had hidden in her clothes. More than 2,500 children were saved in this way. Irina kept a record of all the children she brought to safety, and the list was hidden in cans in a neighbor's garden. Irina's plan went perfectly, until one day everything came crashing down on her. The Nazis discovered what she had been doing, and Irina was arrested. Irina was sent to prison where she was tortured by the Gestapo, had both of her arms broken, but despite the pain and torture, she refused to give any information about the children or their families. Eventually, the Nazis sentenced her to death. But fate had other plans for Irina. Some of Irina's aides managed to bribe a soldier in the prison so she could escape. From that day until her death many years later, Irina lived under a false identity, but she never stopped helping people. My hatred of the German occupiers was strong, then my fear. In addition, my father had taught me that if you see a man drowning, you must try to save him, even if you cannot swim. At the time it was Poland that was drowning, Irina said in an interview with Swedish news paper. When the war ended, Irina handed over the records of all the children she rescued to a rescue organization that helped reunite them with their families. Later in life, Irina got married, had three children. She lived a happy life knowing that she had done the right thing. The reason why I rescued children was because of the way I grew up. I was brought up to believe that a person must be rescued when drowning regardless of religion and nationality. After working so hard to help others through her life, Irina died at the old age of 98. In many ways, she was a forgotten hero and few people knew of her amazing work. In 1964, Irina Sendler received the Israeli honorary title of Polish Righteous Among the Nations, and in 1997, she was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. The prize, however, went to the environmental activist and the former Vice President of the United States, Al Gore. <laughs>